The presence of the police does not suggest anything nice. Hopefully I'm not too late. Monsieur, may I ask what is the purpose of your visit here? Uh, yes, I've come to see a friend. Monsieur Francois de Ville? Yes. I regret to tell you I have some very bad news. Monsieur Ville is dead. I am sorry. Dead? But why? Why did they have to kill him? Ah, it's my fault. I came too late. All right, I'll have to get over it and find out what happened. Okay, tell me, how did it happen? I don't know the details. Uh, according to the detective, uh, it was a suicide. Nonsense. He, he would never do that. Why have you come to see Monsieur Ville, anyway? Uh, I'd rather tell the detective that myself. Well, uh, I'm not supposed to let anybody pass this gate. But your statement might be of interest to the detective. You said Ville was your friend, right? Yes, he is my friend. Uh, I mean, was. Well, all right, then. I'll let you in. Go directly to the front of the house and tell the detective who you are. Who let you in here? You don't happen to be a nearby journalist, do you? No, I don't. The professor is, um, uh, was my friend. Uh, that's why the guard let me come in. In fact, he was more than that. He was my uncle. Oh, I see. We had a lot in common. He was a great man. I understand. I am very sorry for what happened, monsieur. Could you answer a few questions for me now? Sure. Good. Tell me, when have you last spoken to him? Just yesterday. Really? When? I don't know the exact time, but it was already after 10 o'clock when I arrived. What did you talk about? Did he seem normal, so to speak? Yes, he was all right. We were uh, discussing... Yes? Go ahead, monsieur. It could be important. Well, we were planning a journey to Mexico. A joint journey to Mexico, you say? That really is interesting. No, I was supposed to fly by myself, because of his age. Un moment, I'm losing track of continuity here. What was the purpose of that journey? The professor spent years working on research collecting certain data on the Mayan culture. It's a long story. Do you want to hear it? That won't be necessary. I don't think it could be related to the case. Do you have any idea why he would be willing to commit suicide? Suicide? Nonsense! He would never do that! With the work of his life almost finished, he, he was so close! I knew him very well. It, it must have been murder. The suicide note is very explicit, monsieur. Have a look for yourself. But this isn't the professor's handwriting, detective. It was found with the body directly on the table, monsieur. I'd recognize his handwriting even in complete darkness, and I'm telling you, this is not it. Do you have any kind of support for what you are saying? Were I allowed to have a look around the mansion, I might be able to help you. Perhaps, monsieur, but there isn't much to investigate. The case is quite clear. A close-range shot in the temple, and a suicide note. I'm sorry. If I prove that the letter isn't authentic, will you change your opinion? Mais oui, that would be a completely different story then. Good. Let me think for a while. Here, detective, have a look. Well, compare the letter that you have found and this one that the professor wrote himself. He gave it to me yesterday evening. It's supposed to be a message for somebody in Mexico. Interessant. You're right. This is obvious even to my own eyes. The writing is entirely different. <laughs> Great work, really. So it's not common procedure. In light of the evidence you have provided, I'll let you have a look around the mansion. 
You can stay there until I call in the expert, but make sure you leave the whole place as it is, understood? You can rely on me, detective. But of course I'll have to keep the letter. It's important evidence. Is it completely necessary? Absolutely. I must insist. He's taking notes. I didn't manage to warn Professor in time, but certainly he wouldn't want me to stop now. I'll finish his work, and then his murderer is going to pay. A terrible sight. I gave it to my uncle for his birthday. He loved bonsai trees. It leads into the hall and out to the garden. There's a small opening in the bottom, maybe a lock. Photographs from expeditions to South America, which Uncle loved so much. We were sitting here just yesterday evening. I see you weren't there, Francois. So, I'll leave you a message. The books you've ordered have arrived and are here on my table. Should I bring them in myself or are you going to send for them? I prefer the first option so that we can resume our chess game for a bit. I deserve a rematch, so how about this evening? In any case, call me and we'll arrange something. Professor Francois de Wilde? Answer the phone, please, if you're home. I'm calling in an urgent matter. Professor? Hmm, this voice seems familiar, but it doesn't sound like any of the professor's friends or colleagues. The sand hasn't run out yet. The fire is out. It looks like it was often moved. This must be the safe where Uncle hid both the statues. I have to open it somehow. That's impossible. The statues are gone. I have to get them back before those bastards disappear with them for good. There's a little brass key inside the hourglass. 
what lock could it possibly fit? A small key is shimmering in the hourglass. A nice small gold key. Noticed anything that could help us? No, nothing really, I'm afraid. Wait a minute. There is one little detail. There's a message on the answering machine in a voice that I don't know. I mean, it's none of the professor's friends I know. Maybe somebody was checking out if he was at home. Oh, that's a good one. Sounds logical. I'll verify it. But I have to apologize. I, I broke an old hourglass by accident. You should have been more careful. But okay, at least you've told me. Will that be all, Monsieur? Martin Holland. Yes, there's nothing else I've noticed. All right, then. It was my pleasure working with you, Monsieur Holland. Mine too, Detective, but I have to go now. I may need to talk to you again. Is there a way to contact you? Well, I'm staying in the Hotel Saffron at the moment. It's on the opposite coast, not far from the harbor. Goodbye. Au revoir. And merci beaucoup, Monsieur Holland. Goodbye, Detective. Have you spoken with the detective? Yes, I think I've shed some light into that disgusting murder. No souci, Having let you in was a good thing after all. At least I won't have to explain anything to my superiors. May I uh, know what you have concluded? Why don't you ask the detective? I mean, I don't want to talk about it again. You understand. Oh, not from what I see, of course. I have to go now. Goodbye. Au revoir. One can't go down to the sea during high tide. Room 32, oui, monsieur? Yes, 32. We would like to leave as soon as possible. Of course, sir. It's only going to take a minute. That's him. All this time, they've been in the same hotel. I should have suspected. They must have been following me. I'd better bail before he notices me. They knew all about my moves, and it cost Uncle DeVild his life. At least I know where both statues are. I mustn't lose any more time. with old Iris? Uh, no, not really. I I'm staying in this hotel here and just killing time. Now, fiddlesticks. Why would you creep around garbage, eh? That's none of your business. Yeah, right. 
you're not being exactly respectful to an old lady, young man. Well, I didn't even want to talk to you. As you wish. There is nothing to talk about. It's too high, I can't reach it. Hands off, young man. This stick's been around, so you better make sure you don't mess with it. Easy, easy. Hands off, I said. What's that? You come to apologize, eh? A lady you've got to treat like a flower. Never heard of that. Uh, I just wanted... Hoity uh... toity What do you want from me? Uh, I need to borrow your walking stick. <laughs> what? Is my earring okay? Oh, this young man needs something from me all of a sudden, eh? Well, try again. How do you speak to a lady? I must be hallucinating. Wrong again. Oh my, all right. Uh, Madam Iris? Good, and? Would you be so kind as to lend me that stick of yours? Now that's much better. Old Iris will teach you some manners. So, will you lend it to me? No, I won't. Nothing's for free. Well, I just apologized. What? That was supposed to be an apology? But okay, at least you're trying. I'll lend it to you, but you'll have to do me a favor in return. I'm hungry. You want money? Do I look like a beggar or what? Grab something yourself, but my legs aren't what they used to be. Get me a hot dog from that old bolt face Craig. He's got a store right around this corner here. Deal, but you'd better keep your word. What do you think of me? Of course I will. We'll get going. I'm getting so hungry right now, I gotta eat a horse. All right. <laughs> Greetings. What will it be, sir? Hmm. Give me a hot dog. It won't take a minute. See, in fact, even half a minute. See, in fact, you'll have it right away. Well, I'm not in a hurry. With the mustard, right? Can be. Un moment, coming up. Here you go. Three francs. The mustard has a distinct hot smell. Here's that hot dog you wanted. Gimme. Yuck! Is that right filth this is? What? I hate that yellow gooey sewage. Bring me another one, but without the mustard, I'll only take ketchup. Just ketchup, got it? Well, what, what can I do? Now, this is a lady I could kill for. I see you enjoyed your hot dog. Want another one? Yes, but I'd like ketchup instead of mustard. Why, ketchup? In these bars, that is a waste of a hot dog, I tell you. Well, that's what I've got an appetite for. Well, I don't make hot dogs with ketchup, I'm sorry. Is it a problem to just replace mustard with ketchup? What's the big deal? It's not, but uh, like I said, I don't make them. I mean, I have no ketchup here. 
Okay, give me a bear one. Without anything? Yes, without anything. All right, I will, but don't complain about hot dogs of old crazen, okay? Okay. Here it is, one new desk hot dog. Three francs. Have a nice day. Thanks. A small hot dog. Made on request with neither ketchup nor mustard. We have nothing to talk about. Mild ketchup. A hot dog with a mild ketchup. Now that's much better. You're being a nice lad. Yeah, well, looks like it. It cost me some change and a bucket full of nerves. <laughs> well, I can get a bit cross when I'm hungry. But that's going to be better now. So, can I take the stick at last? Hold on a minute. What do you mean, take? That was not the deal. Just lend. Leave it somewhere around here when you're done. Sure, just lend. No problem. Enjoy. <laughs> there is nothing to talk about. A walking stick made of oak wood. I need to slip into the hotel's hall unnoticed. With a bit of luck, I won't run into either one of those two. I'll stay inside. I don't know where the door leads, but it's locked. This isn't my room. Would you have a minute? Of course! How can I help you? What's behind the door at the end of the hall? Over there at the back? Well, just a service closet. Tools, cleaners, clean towels. If you need anything, ask at the reception desk. No, that's all right. I was just curious about the door. Is that all, monsieur? I need to finish this work. I won't be stalling you, thanks. The sensor will detect a possible fire in the building. The outlet is now free. It's full of clear water. The 
pardon me, I'd like to ask you a favor. Sure, sir. The electricity seems to be out in my room. Could you have a look at it? Really? Strange. Before I began with the light heel, I checked all the rooms in this hall. I tried the chandelier as well as the outlets. They're all dead. Come along. Let's see. Most likely it's just a fuse. I'll fix it up right away. Thanks. I'll wait outside. The keys I've borrowed from the serviceman. My hands are clean. The same sensor as those in the hall. There's only more cleaners inside it. An ordinary rag used for swabbing floors. I don't like sweeping. I hate the stench of diluter. My head aches from it. Something's still missing. The rag has a strong smell of diluter. I waited until the hotel got deserted and discreetly slipped back into the hall. There's no time to waste. They're likely to find out very soon that the alarm was false. Room 32. This is where they're staying. The keys to all the rooms in the hotel. The keys to all... Room 32. Great. Time to pay them a little visit before they return. The key to room number 32. The bed is empty and well made. I'll have a look under the bed. Hmm, looks like they left something behind in their haste. A numeric code, goddammit. What could the combination possibly be?
Excellent. My luck has changed again. I won't let anybody take these away from me. Now I have to get lost. Quickly. I don't want to bump into those guys with this in my hands. I bailed from the hotel quietly, calling a cab and setting off to the airport. A long flight to Mexico awaits me.